Hey, what's up? Welcome to this video. I'm very, very excited about this one because we are changing shots from looking like this to this. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I see these volumetric light shafts or these God rays, it just instantly makes the image that I'm looking at so much moodier and so much more cinematic. Now, we've talked about this in our last video very briefly, and I wanted to break down in a full tutorial everything about how this can be done in After Effects with literally just a few clicks. It's so simple. Now, before jumping into the steps, I do want to mention that I'll be using my own pack for this volumetric light effects. You don't have to, but it just launched with the premiere of this video. So it is live right now. You can go in the description, chrisgarth.com slash marketplace or slash volumetric light effects, and you can find the product there. I'm super proud of it. Like I spent so much time working on this and I'm just so excited because let's be real, there's plenty of you know light elements and light things like that out in the market but this feels like something truly mine that I just see so many uses for and it hasn't really been done before. So I, I couldn't wait to share it with you. Like I said, it's been in the works for a while and it's finally out. But as I also mentioned in the last episode, you don't have to buy my pack, you can make your own. And I showed you how to do that. Uh, but of course it saves you a lot of time and that's the whole point of having uh, affordable yet high quality assets such as the ones in the marketplace, chriscart.com slash marketplace. With that being said, let's take a look at how we can do this. All right, so the first example that we're gonna look at, we're gonna start off real simple and we're starting with this static shot, this warehouse scene, and I'm just gonna drop in one of the assets, one of the volumetric window effects from the pack. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go under the transform properties and set it to screen so we can get rid of the black background and then resize it and kind of match the direction of this sort of skylight that we have here at the top. And then all I have to do is just rotate it a little bit, hit R on your keyboard to bring up the rotation of this asset and uh, yeah, just place it right next to that spot. Now don't worry so much about the edges not matching up, just focus on the direction and just the size of it so that it just matches the outer edges of the shape of the window. Now we can just grab the pen tool and we can clean up those edges so that it actually matches the shape of the window and the, this hole in the ceiling much better. So there we go. We'll create one for that shape and one at the bottom just to kind of taper off and let it kind of fade into the environment. And all we have to do is just feather those two masks and that is it. That's it. It's that simple. And we have a shot that feels pretty dramatic. It's a, it's a pretty big difference with, like I said, just a few steps. And by the way, as a bonus, we can also throw in some assets from another pack that I have called Particles. And that's just gonna create a nice little subtle layer of atmosphere of just these floating dust particles, which also helps. Okay, so that is all well for a static shot, but what if the shot is moving? What if we have you know, a, a scene that requires 3D motion tracking? So let's take a look at that. Now in this shot, we have this sort of church scenario and um, you know, you can tell that the camera is slowly moving in and, uh, you know, just slapping on some assets and calling it a day is not going to work in this case. So what do we do? Well, the first thing is select the layer of your shot, duplicate it. Usually I would rotoscope anything that is in the foreground. So for example, this subject right here, he appears in, uh, in front of all these elements. Uh, if you just leave it as it is, all these elements that you're going to be throwing in, although they'll match your movement they're gonna be overlapping with stuff that doesn't really make sense, stuff that's supposed to be in the foreground. So like I said, I used to do rotoscoping with this, but ro the Rotobrush tool in After Effects has actually gotten so powerful with AI that I'm gonna be using this, and with just a few clicks, literally selecting the Rotobrush tool, double-clicking the layer you wanna Rotobrush, uh, of course, it needs to be a duplicate copy of the footage so that you can actually separate the subject, and all you have to do is just kind of outline it even really roughly with your mouse and it will just analyze that figure and stick to it for the rest of your composition. Now, you do wanna click through it just to make sure that it is doing a good job at sticking. For the most part, it will do, but the less contrast you have between what you're trying to rotoscope or separate and your background, the more trouble it might have. So you might have to like, you know, redefine some of those edges for it a little bit. But once you've kind of 
pushed it in the right direction a few times, it does a pretty solid job. And just like that, with just a few clicks, you have a perfectly separated subject. So with that being done, now we can 3D track our scene and go under animation and select 3D camera tracker. Now this is gonna analyze your scene. I've done plenty of tutorials on the 3D camera tracker feature in After Effects, but you don't even need to watch that because there's nothing to it. It literally does all the magic itself. It analyzes your scene and it throws back at you a bunch of data points that are essentially a representation of your scene in a 3D environment. So all you have to do is select the area of wherever you wanna add your assets. So where in the scene you wanna drop in your elements. And from there, we can create a solid or a null, it doesn't really matter, and a camera. So this process is gonna establish a 3D camera that's pretty much a digital simulated exact copy of your real camera that, uh, you know, that was used in the real world to film this scene. So now you have the same movement and you have the coordinates of where everything is in your scene. And based on that, you can keep moving along in this way just by selecting points in the area in your scene that you want to drop elements in, creating a null or a solid, just an object so that you can actually grab the position coordinates from that object. And then you can bring in whatever element, turn it into a 3D layer, and then just paste the position coordinates from those, you know, nulls or solids that you created as reference so that it actually can stick to not just your scene and the camera movement, but that specific part of your scene. And once we do that, of course, it's going to kind of throw off the scale and all the other stuff. So you have to kind of like, you know, reposition it and resize it to match what you want. And then just like we saw from the previous example, all you have to do is just clean it up with some basic masks, some feathering, just so that you can, you know, just, uh, taper the effect off and match it to your scene or to the size of the windows. Once you're dropping in all these elements, uh, you can use this separation that we created as a bonus to also include some adjustment layers that only apply to the background behind your subject. So you can create not just these volumetric light shafts, but perhaps you can lower the contrast of just the background and that will also kind of add to the sense of haze and um, you know dimension in, in your shot. And by the way, guys, if you're curious about where I've gotten this footage, uh, it's actually not my own footage that I've shot myself. I usually use that, but for these uh, shots and for the promo material for the trailer and everything else, I wanted to get very specific shots. And that's where our sponsor comes in, artgrid.io. And this isn't just useful for adding, you know, light shafts and practicing in that way. But I've seen a lot of people ask me, you know, for footage to practice these tutorials with. And a lot of times I can't give that out because it's copyrighted material. It's stuff I shot for clients. And the beautiful thing about a place like ArtGrid is that you can just sign up for their premium membership and you can get unlimited downloads. So you can browse for any kind of footage that you want. Uh, and, and you can even edit out and practice sequences because it's not just these individual clips, they actually usually come with a full collection or a full sequence or a full scene of clips that uh, that were made in a consistent way visually that are part of the same location. So you can actually build out sequences so you can practice in your editing, practice with your VFX. And that's why I really care to share this with you because uh, it's not just a great place to get stock footage, but it's also a great place to just experiment and practice and learn. I mean, it's been a huge resource for, like I said, getting very specific shots for promo material that I'm doing in such a quick way. It's honestly amazing. Like I'm genuinely, genuinely excited about it. And that's where all the footage from this tutorial comes from. So if you are interested, check out my link in the description. I'm a huge supporter of both Artlist and Artgrid. They're the same company. They've believed in the channel for a very long time and I genuinely believe in their products. They have the best and most cinematic stock footage that you could possibly find anywhere else. I'm not exaggerating. I've been around, trust me when I tell you, um, their stuff is curated in a way that only lends itself for super high quality and something that could just belong into a movie. Not only that, they also offer really high resolutions. Some of this footage is even ungraded and raw, so you can just perfectly custom fit it to your own project. They have a ton of overlays, which kind of competes with the market I'm trying to establish, but hey, they're so good that I have to shut it out. I mean, look at this stuff. You can just throw this stuff in your footage and it just looks pretty great. <laughs>
All right, guys, so with that being said, I mean, looking at these before and after, as you can see the power of just adding an overlay or tracking it into your scene. And with very simple steps, you can elevate and really change the vibe and the whole feeling of a shot. So I hope you learned something from this. And like I said, I'm really excited for this new product, Volumetric Light Effects. It's something that I've worked super hard on and I really, really think you will find a lot of good use in it. So the link is in the description. Just go ahead, check it out. There's more examples there of how you can use it. And I cannot wait to see what you guys will make of it. Uh, so far, the support and the feedback from all the other products has been truly amazing. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks again to Arcrid. And uh, yeah, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr, and I'll see you next time.